Leading the most populous black nation in the world for an aggregate of 11 years, both as a military head of state and a two-term executive president, and living a path that bestows a rare brilliance of life, is this an act of fate, a sheer providence, or an undying willpower to succeed? At 80, Nigeria's former president, Olusha Gombasujo, reflects on his life's journey so far. The big question, who really is former president Obasanjo? A patriot? A valiant? Does he wield supernatural powers or a divinely blessed man? This interview with former President Obasanjo presents a no holds barred perspective of his life and times culminating to his 80th birthday. You're welcome on this special discourse. I'm Benga Ashiru. You may also join in this conversation by sending us your comments on our various social media platforms showing on your screen. Indeed, the man former President Obasanjo could be described as a man of many parts, but as we reveal the many crucial moments in his life, we would get to know who Obasanjo really is. Find out his perspectives on the many coups that characterize his long and accomplished military career. Were the coup based on ideology or a maniacal ambition to wield power? Join us in this exclusive interview with the former president, Obasanjo, at 80. I was born in a village <clears throat> and um, I was, some people talk of being born with silver spoon. I wasn't even born with a wooden spoon. Um, my parents never went to school. Um, uh, so my birth and upbringing were completely rural. Um, I don't know what that one, uh, what one will say that uh, one meant for one's uh, beginning in life. Um, but I thank God that in spite of that handicap, if one can call it handicap, um, God made adequate provision for me. Did, did you ever drop in your mind at any point in time that you were, you were born to rule this nation, to lead this nation at a certain stage in your life? You cannot think of anybody born in this village at that time by the parents that I was born uh, by. Um, no education of any kind for them. Uh, and who would ever think that he would do anything other than what was normal in, in the village, being a farmer or being a petty trader, which was what my parents were. Um, so how can I, without, with the, without the exposure that I came to have much later in life, ever think that even my name will be heard beyond the next village? It's inconceivable. So the idea of uh, thinking that I will rule uh, a local government, or uh, even uh, being, being the ballet of a village, never crossed my mind, let alone uh, ruling Nigeria. Your decision to join the military, uh, what was it born out of? It wasn't a conscious decision you know some people will say well uh, i come from a, a military family or uh, i was inspired by uh, this uh, military event or that military personality of course uh, when I, after i joined the, uh, the military i started reading biographies and, uh, and autobiographies so there were leaders uh, military leaders that uh, uh, inspired me. But joining the army itself, uh, it was more by accident than by design. Um, I, I left school and my intention was to keep on reading and um, seek admission to, for higher, uh, to higher institution and um, go on acquiring certificates and, and that sort of thing. And um, so one day I took a newspaper. 
and uh, so that advertisement for um, uh, uh, examination for cadets also going to be officer cadets and uh, so like, since I was reading yeah, this would be one way of testing myself uh, we have English mathematics and all that and that's so I applied I was in Nevada working as a teacher in a, a modern school and uh, the reply came I got warrant railway warrant to go to Lagos I went for the exam um, I didn't really take it very seriously I, I the result came and I was invited to Lagos again for interview I went to Lagos I, I passed by this time I have secured a scholarship uh, it's a UN scholarship uh, for uh, students or candidates from non-self-governing territories. You like go to the military when I passed the exam and the interview and because the, the scholarship could be de de deferred for one year, I said, look, let me take, try the army and of course if it doesn't work, um, uh, I have a fallback position. So, that's I, uh, and then one thing uh, uh, led to another.